Today we are going to be talking about area of a closed traverse. Traverse surveying is one in which the framework consists of connected lines whose lengths are measured with a chain or tape and the direction are determined with an angular instrument. There are two types of traverse, closed traverse and open traverse. Closed traverse is said to be closed when a complete circuit is made when it returns to starting point forming a closed polygon as shown in the figure. Open traverse is a traverse that does not form a closed polygon. It consists of a series of line extending in the same general direction and does not return to the starting point. Let's talk more about closed traverse. Latitude is the projection on the north and south lines. It may be called north or positive latitude and south or negative latitude. Departure is the projection on the east and west lines. West departure is sometimes called negative departure while east departure is sometimes called positive departure. To be able to understand it more, we can base it on the x and y component. When we say the y component, it represents the latitude, while the x component represents the departure. In the shown figure, the line AB has its latitude AC, and its departure line BC. The angle theta in this figure is the bearing of the line AB. The formula for latitude is latitude is equal to distance multiplied by cosine theta, and the formula for departure is departure is equal to distance multiplied to sine theta. In the shown figure, it shows the correct sign conventions for latitude and departure. In the first quadrant, it shows that both latitude and departure are positive. In the second quadrant, the latitude is positive and the departure is negative. In the third quadrant, both the latitude and the departure are negative. And lastly, in the fourth quadrant, the latitude is negative and the departure is positive. So later on, we will be having an example about latitude and longitude. But for now, let's proceed to the next topic, which is the error of closure. Error of closure is a short line of unknown length and direction connecting the initial and final station of the traverse. When the latitudes are added together, the resulting error is called the error in latitude. The resulting error from adding departure is called the error in the departure. Based on the picture below, if the measured bearing and distance are plotted on a sheet of paper, the figure will not close because of the error in latitude and the error of the departure. To be able to solve for the error of closure, the formula is error of closure is the square root of the sum of the error in latitude squared and the error of departure squared. And the formula for the position or the relative error is equal to the error of closure over the perimeter of all courses or the summation of all distances. Let's answer this example. A parcel of land has been surveyed in the field and the length and bearings of the various sides are shown. Compute the error of closure for the traverse shown and what is the precision of the linear measure of the traverse. The first step to solving this problem is to solve for the latitude and departure first. Since the line AB lies in the first quadrant, it is safe to say that both the latitude and the departure are positive. We can then use the formula shown on the earlier slides to solve for the latitude and the departure. To solve for latitude AB, we can use the formula latitude AB is equal to the distance multiplied by cosine theta. The distance in this example is 59.82 and theta in this example is 53 degrees and 27 minutes. This will then lead to the answer of latitude AB is equal to positive 35.62 meters. To solve for departure, we can use the formula departure is equal to the distance multiplied by sine theta. In this example, departure AB 
has the distance of 59.82 and a theta value of 53 degrees and 27 minutes. This will then give the answer of positive 48.06 meters. In dealing with this type of problem, usually it takes too much time in manually solving the individual latitude and departures. So I will introduce a shortcut method using our calculators that would easily help us determine its departure and latitude without thinking much about the time. The first step to solve for both departure and latitude is to press the shift button, then the minus sign. Input the distance and the bearing. This will then result to a value of x and y. Remember that our x value is the latitude while the y value is our departure. We can then place the correct sign convention. For line BC, we can see that the line BC lies in the fourth quadrant. This means that the latitude is negative and the departure is positive. We can then solve for the latitude and the departure. The latitude BC is equal to the distance multiplied to cosine theta. Latitude BC is equal to 70.38 multiplied to cosine 66 degrees and 54 minutes. This will give the answer of negative 27.61 meters. To solve for departure, departure BC is equal to the distance multiplied to sine theta. In this example, departure BC is equal to 70.38 multiplied to sine 66 degrees and 54 minutes. This will give the answer of positive 64.74 meters. We can also use the shortcut method. By using our calculators, we can press the shift button, then the minus sign. Doing this allows us to utilize the REC function. This will convert polar coordinates into rectangular coordinates. We can then input the distance and the bearing. This means that you will have to input 70.38 comma 66 degrees and 54 minutes in your calculator. After inputting the values, we can then press equals, which will result to a value of x and y. The x value is the latitude, while the y value is the departure. Then we can place the correct sign convention. For a line CD, it lies on the third quadrant. This means that both departure and latitude is negative. To solve for latitude CD, it is equal to 76.62 multiplied to cosine 29 degrees and 8 minutes. This will then give an answer of negative 66.93 meters. To solve for departure CD, it is equal to 76.62 meters multiplied to sine 29 degrees and 8 minutes. This will then give you an answer of negative 37.3 meters or we can also use the shortcut method by pressing the shift button again then the minus sign we can then input the distance in the bearing this means that we have to input 76.62 as the distance and 29 degrees and 8 minutes for the bearing this will then result to a value of x and y with x as the latitude and y as our departure we can then place the correct sign convention Lastly, for line DA, it is located at the second quadrant. The latitude will be positive and the departure will be negative. To solve for the latitude and the departure, we can then use the formulas found on the earlier slides. Latitude DA is equal to 95.75 multiplied to cosine 52 degrees. This will then give an answer of positive 58.95 meters. To solve for the departure dA, it is equal to 95.75 meters multiplied to sine 52 degrees. This will then give an answer of departure dA is equal to negative 75.45 meters. We can also use the shortcut method found on the earlier slides. To use the shortcut method, we must press the shift button first, then the minus sign. We can then input the distance and the bearing. In this example, the distance is 95.75 and the bearing is 52 degrees. After inputting the distance and the bearing, it will result to an x and y value. 
The x value is the latitude, while the y value is the departure. And lastly, we can place the correct sign convention. For step 2, now that we have latitude and departures of all lines, we have to get the sum of the values of latitude and departure. This will give us the sum of latitude equal to positive 0 0.03 and a sum of departures of positive 0 0.05. For the third step, input the summation of latitude and departure. This will give us a formula of the error of closure is equal to the square root of the error of latitude squared plus the error of departure squared. We can then input the data which will give us the error of closure is equal to the square root of 0 0.03 squared plus 0 0.05 squared. This will then give us an answer of 0 0.0583 meters. So the fourth step deals in solving for the perimeter, and in solving for the perimeter, all we have to do is to add all the distances of the lines. And knowing that line AB has a distance of 59.82 meters, line BC with 70.38 meters, line CD with 76.62 meters, and line DA with 95.75 meters, the total distance of the sides or the perimeter is equal to 302.57 meters. Lastly, for step 5, we can then input the perimeter to the formula of precision. The formula of precision is precision is equal to the error of closure over the perimeter. We can then input the values we have in this example to the formula. This will make precision equal to 0 0.0583 over 302.57. When simplified, the precision is equal to 1 over 5,190.